For our first project, you're going to need one of these wood cutouts. This comes out of the Shore Living line. Uh, I did not find this over in that section at Dollar Tree. I found this over in the Crafter Square section. You're also going to need some Waverly Antique Wax. If you don't have access to the Waverly Antique Wax, you can always use a dark brown like a burnt umber. I removed the jute cord and the tag. Now I already have a little bit of the Waverly Antique Wax out. If you're using paint, you want to put some paint out. And then I'm going to thin this down just a little bit with some water. Just start with a small amount. You can always add more. The thinner the consistency, the lighter the color stain will look. Once you have it thoroughly mixed, you want to get a good coat onto your piece. My wheel is dry. I want to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of aging. And I'm going to do that using some of the Folk Art Matte. This is Country 12. And this is my favorite old brush for any type of dry painting. So I just put a small amount out, just kind of dip into it, brush off any excess. And then I always like to just kind of go around the edges and kind of pull in. I don't want a lot on here. I just want enough to um, age it and give it a little bit more texture. So it looks a little weathered. I like that a lot. It gives that little bit of weathered and aged look to the wheel. While we're waiting for our wheel to finish drying, I'm going to move forward. You're also going to need one of these. Uh, they're brand new this year. You can find it in the Shore Living. They just call this a wall charm. They have three different ones to choose from. They have the cute little boat here. They also have a white shell or a white anchor. And they're all trimmed in just a little bit of beige. They do come with a jute hanger and some beads at the top and then some beads at the bottom and a tassel. Now I want to use this, but we're going to transfer it over. So here on the back, it's just stapled on and I've been using my nice trusty wire cutters here to help me get that staple out. That allows me to get a good grip. And then I just kind of twist until it pulls out. That's perfect, and then my jute cord is intact. I'm just going to remove the tag here. So up here where the hole is, I want to tie the top part here. That's what I'm going to use to hang my piece. And then the bottom portion here, I'm going to attach to the back so it hangs down on the bottom. I think that will look really cute. So I don't need too much here at the bottom, so I'm going to cut it a little bit down towards the bottom here. Turn this over and I'm going to hot glue the bottom on and just use the rope there. Okay, and then while that's drying, I'm going to tie this onto the top here. 
just added a little dab of hot glue right to the top and then twisted it make it a little easier for me to get it through the hole there we go okay so I just did your basic double knot and I did leave enough so that it could pull up and now I'm just going to hot glue the knot and my tail ends on the back here So I have my tassel moved over and my hanger, and now I'm adding a little bit more detail with some jute cord. I'm wrapping uh, this part and I'm leaving out a good probably inch there on the end. It's really easy, just start on the back at the base here, add a little bit of hot glue. I really like that. I think that adds quite a bit. I'm going to do that to each one. I have all my jute cord attached. Now, if you don't like it fuzzy, you can always take a lighter and get close to it and that will burn off all the fuzz. That doesn't bother me. I think it just makes it look a little bit more rustic. Now I want to put my boat right here in the center. I want to make sure the mast is lining up with the top and the bottom. And I want to make sure I leave at least an inch, inch and a half worth of space here at the top. So once you find your placement, we're going to be attaching that with a combination of Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and Hot Glue. Aileen's takes a good 24 to 48 hours to set up, but once it does, this puppy won't go anywhere, even if this gets moist, wet, hot, or cold. So if they want to hang it in a bathroom, you're not going to have to worry about your ship here falling off. If you get any glue in an area that you can see, like right in the center here, just clean up as much as you can. That's okay. Um, the A lanes will dry clear, so you don't have to worry about it. So I've added a little bit of weight here. And now I'm going to add my final element. I have these really nice shells. I found them in one of the little jars. These are the nice small shells that they have. And these are just your basic shell. They're wide at one end and kind of pointed at the other, and they're white. Some of them have a little bit of beige on them. That's fine. So as I work through here, I want to make sure that my point of my shell is always facing towards the center. Actually, that one's a little big. Put a smaller one up there. I'm happy with that placement. I placed the two smaller ones that I had, one at the top here, one at the bottom. And then in the areas where there's larger space, I placed the ones that were a little bit larger. So I'm happy with how that looks. Move my weight here. Very much so. I think that is perfect. So I'm just going to get my little shells glued down. And I'm just going to hot glue them on. And there you go, we're all done. I got all of my shells glued down and I'm really happy with the end result. I think this is very pretty, very nautical and unique. 
and you can make this project for about five dollars worth of items from Dollar Tree and some paint. So this is a very budget friendly DIY. For our next project you're going to need one of the foam wreath forms that you can pick up at Dollar Tree and you're also going to need a couple packages of the nautical rope. The one that I'm using is 11.1 feet. Now when you open up the package of rope, the ends are taped and that's okay. You want to leave it taped until you get to that point where you're going to be gluing that section down because that helps keep the rope from unraveling. I want to cover the base here with my rope. So I'm going to start by gluing the end on the back here. Now I always like to glue the first two ropes together when I start on a new piece. I want to make sure that that's nice and secure. I don't need it to come loose because then the rest will unravel. Then I'm just simply going to work on getting a nice tight wrap on my green foam wreath. I have my base completely covered. It did take exactly three packages of the 11.1 foot white nautical rope that you can get at Dollar Tree. I do have this one piece left and I'm going to be adding it right here. Now I ran into a little issue because the outer ring is larger than the inner ring. So at the end of each rope that I had, I made sure to cut a piece that was large enough to fit in like that. And then I just kind of pushed everything over and made a space and glued it in. Now on this one, the last piece, I have this much left of the rope and I added a little bit of hot glue here at the end and just kind of twisted it so it won't come apart on me. And I'm going to show you how to glue that in there, but instead of just gluing it all the way across, which I did earlier, I'm going to use this as the handle. But you glue it in the same way. So I'm going to start right here in the point. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. Twist down my rope, and then I'm going to lay it right in there. And I'm going to use my little spatula here to help me tuck and to fit it into that little space and try to get all of those little ends down. Just going to push and tuck. And I start on the nice side. It seems easier to get the first piece in nice and clean. And then I don't have to worry too much about the other piece because that will be in the back. And then that will fill in the top. So I would normally glue it like that as I'm working around, but this time I'm going to glue it into the center here and then I'm going to add this side the same way and glue up and then that's what I'm going to use to hang. So I only want to glue this side until I'm at the center. See, so that filled it in from the front very nicely and it looks nice and clean. So when I cut the tape off here, I'm going to cut at an angle again. It'll make it easier to get it to squeeze in. And then I just add a little bit of hot glue kind of in the middle like a little dab give it a second to cool 
and then I just pull and kind of twist the ends together. That way it, it won't come unraveled on me before I get it glued down. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this and get this glued down. I think that looks very pretty. This is the front. It looks nice and clean. And I have my hanger. I have this really beautiful dark navy ribbon. This is really good ribbon. I believe I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. Um, craftoutlet.com also carries really good ribbon and this is one and a half inches at 10 yards and they do have an item number I will insert that here you will need to cut four pieces at about eight and a half inches that what is what works for me each piece needs to be able to completely wrap around your wreath and then come over the ribbon by at least an inch. For me that was about eight and a half inches. So I have my four pieces cut. Now to help me get a visual placement I'm going to use some rulers. So I'm going to work on this section. So I'm going to lay my rulers so that the inner edge here is right down the center. And then my second ruler, the top edge, is going to be down the center. And then I want to put one piece of ribbon in each quarter. This is just helping me get a better visualization. Once I have my placement, I'm going to pull it to the back and get it glued down. When I glue the top piece over, I'm just going to take that end and fold it down by about a half an inch. I want to make sure that edge stays nice and clean and I don't get any fraying. Perfect. Now to trim this out, I'm going to use this really pretty a rope that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. This is half an inch by 15 feet. It is the Robert Stanley collection. I just recently picked this up the last time their ribbon went on sale. And I did find it over in the ribbon section. And we're going to trim this right in the center of each piece. absolutely adorable. Now you're going to want to do this in each of the four quadrants on your wreath. I have all of my trim pieces on and I'm really happy with them. I love the two of the ribbon and the rope together. I think that's so pretty. Very much a nautical feel. Now the last thing I want to add is one of these little anchors. Now I'm going to remove the rope here and I want to glue my anchor right in the center. It just barely fits. 
So I'm going to get the tip glued on and then I'm going to get the top here glued on and I want to make sure that we're in line with the hanger right down the center. So that looks good. I have a good amount of glue right there at the tip and at the top there. I just want to let this fully set up. And here you go, we're all done. I'm very happy with the end result. It definitely gives me that nautical and by the sea vibe. I think it's going to be a perfect new addition to my bathroom decor. For our next project, you're going to need a package of these wood cutouts. You get the little wheel, the sailing ship, and the anchor. You will need one of each of those. If you can't find this specific package in the Crafter Square section, usually over in Shore Living, they will have individual packages of these same type of icons that you can buy. You usually get six of each individual one, so you can always look for those as well. I'm going to start with the wheel, and I'm going to do that with the Waverly Antique Wax. I have a little bit here. I'm going to add a little bit of water because I want to thin that out a little bit. I don't want it quite as dark. You just want to mix that real well before you start. On our anchor, I'm going to be using the Admiral Blue by Apple Barrel. Now I'm going to work on my boat. I'm going to do my sails white and then I'm going to add a little bit of the gray to give a little bit more dimension to the sails. And then here on the body of my boat, I'm going to be using the lipstick red. Now you just saw me go over that two times and this is Dollar Tree tubed acrylic paint. I can still see the wood through that. There is like nothing there. Again, Dollar Tree's paint is crap. I need to grab another paint. Okay, so I just put out some of the Apple Barrel White. And the only one I have of that is gloss, which I didn't really want gloss, but since it's all I have, I'm going to use it because this paint by Dollar Tree is worthless. Now that's the way paint should look when you put it on. Okay, so that is the apple barrel just by itself. I tried to put it over the other paint and it still would not attach properly. So I would totally stay away from any paint that you get from Dollar Tree. I have tried all of the acrylic paints that they have and I don't like any of them.
Now just by adding a little bit of gray, see it gives that uh, sails a little bit more dimension. Now when the white paint dries, I will go in and put a little staff there in the center. But for right now, I'm just gonna let this dry and I'm gonna do the bottom here. I was just adding a little bit of detail. I went ahead and added a mask. And I'm just using the Waverly Antique Wax. And then here on my anchor, I'm just going around the edges and adding a small amount just to give it a little bit more definition. Make it look a little aged and weathered. Now while my pieces are finishing drying, I'm going to finish working here on my wheel. And I just want to add a little bit of jute cord to each of the pegs here. Just add a little drop of hot glue at the base to get your jute cord secure. And just wrap around a couple times, about three or four times. Add another little drop of glue and then trim your jute cord. You'll want to do that to each of the little prongs. I have the wheel done and I'm really happy with the end result. I like that very much. Now I'm going to add a little bit of jute cord to my anchor here. And then I'm just going to pull it over and wrap it around the center here a couple times. So just play with it a little bit until you get it wrapped the way that you like it. I like that. So now I'm going to tack down the other end and trim. All of my pieces are ready to go. Now you're going to need one of these nice wood blanks you can get from Dollar Tree. This is about 16 inches by five and a half. And I'm simply going to add my three little pieces across. I'm going to start with my ship in the middle and then one on either side. I'm going to be attaching these with a combination of Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and Hot Glue.
And there you go, I'm all done. I'm really happy with the end result. I like all three of our icons. It gives me that nautical feel, which is exactly what I was going for. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's three nautical DIYs. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and show some love in the comments. This really does help support my channel. And if you know anyone who would enjoy my content, please share it with them. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. If you enjoy craft tutorials and hauls, you're going to want to check out these other videos. Thanks again. It's always a pleasure. You have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.